What's up everyone? My name is Platinum Howler, coach of your Delta Gligers. Today I'm bringing you my quarterfinal match of the NCL versus my very good friend Corona. Uh, so because we finished first in the league uh, in the regular season, we had first choice of who we wanted to uh, go up against in the first round of the playoffs and I chose Corona because when we played back in week two, uh, <laughs> uh, that that was just kind of a joke of a game, and uh, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to fix that. You know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get some revenge and uh, give myself another chance so that uh, we could have a game against each other that would be a total joke. Um, if you don't remember, that was the game where I got 5-0'd by Dragon Dance Necrozma because I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, but now I do. Uh, I have made some adjustments to the team. Uh, I have a Jellison here that is much more standard, but still not carrying will o -Wisp for some reason. Um, I, think, I, I think it was mainly just for... Actually, I don't really even know what exactly Toxic over will o -Wisp was for, to be honest. But Yeah, so uh, we have Banded Halucha again, which is like the same spread and set that I brought the first time, except we have Iron Head on it this time. For some reason, I didn't run Iron Head on it the first time. I think I had probably high jump kick, like dual fighting stab, I think. But um, yeah, like just in case of Decidueye didn't come on his end. Uh, so looking at, looking at his team, he's got... Um, he, uh, he, has, he brought Lapras and Galissapod this time, the first time he brought uh, Hydreigon and Cobalion. So bringing his lower tier mods instead this time, which is pretty uh, interesting to say the least. And the three mods, once again, not making an appearance for him would be Decidueye, Miltank, and Hariyama. Um, also difference, differences with my team. Uh, the first time I brought Salamence and Claydol, and this time I'm bringing Porygon 2 and Rillaboom. The Porygon 2 set is pretty standard. Um, I made it actually well, aside from the EV spread, because I made it, I made it uh, quite offensive because uh, I was hoping that I could trace the Sheer Force from Nido King, and I'd be able to do a lot of damage with Sheer Force boosted Tri Attacks and Ice Beams. And my Rillaboom set, I'm very fond of. It's a uh, sub bulk up with drum beating and drain punch. I can substitute up on most things or anything that I pressure out. And Rotom has to go for overheat to break my sub, so he's going to be lowering his special attack. And I can kind of just sub him down while he lowers his special attack to nothing. Then I can start boosting up. Um, and yeah, so it's it's that's the main reason I have substitute, I would say. Um, and I can also just click it. I can also, well, I don't, I don't know what else I was gonna say. <laughs> um, yeah, Hatterene is a similar. S actually, no, the first Hatterene that I brought was Assault Vest, and then he just brought Physical Neo King, which was a totally good bring against me, and I should have expected it. So um, this time I'm, I'm not bringing Assault Vest because otherwise, like if he brings Physical Neo King again, which I honestly expected him to, it would be. Assault Vest would be kind of bad, so I just have the standard Trick Room set instead. Although I don't have Mystical Fire because the only thing I would have needed that for was Cavalion, and it's not KOing Cavalion. Uh, so I thought I would rather have Draining Kiss on there instead as a way to get some of my HP back. Uh, and if I ever click that against Hydreigon, then I would keep be able to keep myself healthy. I have the Bibiri Berry to eat a, uh, a Flash Cannon from Hydreigon. And then Stack Attacka, we brought Stack Attacka the first time as well, um, except we have Superpower over Earthquake this time. Uh, just something to change it up. It hits uh, Hydreigon super effectively. Um, it hits Cavalion super effectively. It always did with Earthquake before, but Superpower is more powerful. And I don't particularly care about the attack drop because I, since I am the lonely set, I will. If I get a kill with the superpower, I'll just stay at the same attack stat that I was already at. So, yep, uh, that's the team that I'm rocking out with, and we will get into the game right now. I decided to lead off 
with my uh, Bandit Halucha because it outspeeds everything on his team. I don't see any likely Scarfers on his end. I really don't think that this Rotom King is going to be Scarf, so I can just U-turn out on it and get some momentum. Um, I know he's going to go for Volt Switch here, so I had to bring in Porygon 2. I could not bring in Hatterene uh, on a Volt Switch, otherwise he could just go Nido King and pressure me out. So uh, I was very curious to me that he went out into Lapras. My initial thought was that he was going to be like a Whirlpool trapping set to beat Porygon 2, which I wouldn't put past Corona whatsoever because he's, he comes up with the most amazing sets. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's brought a set like that on with Lapras before this season. So I get my Trick Room up with Hatterene after I bounce back the Toxic at him, which was really nice. And this damage that I'm doing in Necrozma confirms to me that this is an Assault Vest Necrozma. Um, so I'm basically, at this point, content with trading Hatterene for Necrozma, uh, if I can get if I like get this monster out of the way, then that would be that would be really good for me. So, uh, yeah, it takes four four hits for me to knock him out because of how bulky he was. I went for a draining kiss because another dazzling gleam wasn't going to knock him out, and I could, you know, keep myself healthier just in case he got a crit against me or something. Uh, but now he just brings in Galissa Pod and goes for first impression to knock me out. I can bring in Halucha, and my play here is to U-turn. Uh, I could because I threatened this thing out with a Brave Bird. Um, it actually went into Lapras instead of Rotom Heat, which surprised me. Um, and like, no matter what he went out into, I would have something that I could go into. Uh, if he stayed in for whatever reason, then I could just go into Jellicent on his Galissapod and uh, take a hit from that. So I get in Rillaboom against Lapras, and this is where I start to make bad plays. Um, so I went for a Substitute. The substitute wasn't the bad play. The next turn is the, is the bad play. Uh, I went for a sub just to scout what he wanted to do. Um, he went for Ice Shard, presumably just wanting to sack this Lapras to uh, to Rillaboom, assuming that I would be like Bandit or something, and then he didn't want to switch anything else into a Bandit attack. Um, but the Ice Shard turns out that it only does 19%, which is never going to break my substitute. Uh, because I have max HP on this Rillaboom. Uh, or at least near max HP, so that a mill tank's seismic toss would never break the substitute. That was the reason why I did that. So I get a free sub up now. The sub has not taken any chip at all. Um, I think another reason why I went for sub here was because I thought there was a chance that he wouldn't have an ice move on this, which was in hindsight pretty pretty dumb when I am a Halusha on my team. Uh, it's good to have Ice Shard in the back. Well, and I have a Salamence on my team too that I brought in the first game, so I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, but on this turn, <laughs> I go for a Drain Punch instead of a Drum Beating when I know this thing can't break my sub with an Ice Shard. I was so like intrigued by the idea of getting my HP back with Drain Punch when, judging by that damage, Drum beating under grassy terrain would have knocked this thing out clean, and I could have had a substitute up still. Uh, not, I wouldn't have been as healthy as I am right now, but I would have had a sub up, and I wouldn't be forced out by this Galizapod. I could have, I could have, as he breaks the sub with first impression or something, I could have just uh, clicked bulk up, and then knocked this thing down below 50% the next turn, and then he'd be forced to switch out into something that wouldn't want to take a hit from me at all. So, uh, I just make some bad plays here. Um, another bad play was setting up Trick Room in front of Galissapod that is very clearly min speed to outspeed uh, Jellicent in Trick Room. So, all I get out of this is Toxic on Galissapod. I don't even get a burn off against it because I didn't bring Willow Wisp. So, I kind of just threw my Jellicent away there and now my Galissapod answers are not nearly as good. But right here, I bring in. Um, I, I bring in Sack Attacka, and I'm pretty sure he's going to want to save this thing. Uh, but I wasn't expecting Diancy to come out. I was I was expecting uh, Needle King to come in to take uh, to take the Stone Edge. And in hindsight, I probably should have just gone for the Stone Edge uh, because I needed damage off against the Needle King for Haluja to put in the most work in the end game. Uh, so yeah, but I, the also, also another reason why I did switch out the Porygon too. Uh, predicting his switch out was so that if he did go into Nino King, then 
I could set up Trick Room again in front of the Nino King. Um, and the fact that I traced Emergency Exit wouldn't make any difference because there is a very weird interaction with Sheer Force and Emergency Exit. Uh, Sheer Force attacks don't activate Emergency Exit if you bring it below 50%. So even though I had traced <laughs> Glyph Spot's ability, it wouldn't have mattered if I was going up against Needle King. Um, but yeah, I, as I set up Trick Room again, I managed to get in Stack Attacka. I had a pretty free switch in there because this is a Focus Sashed Stack Attacka, so it could have taken any hit from uh, Diancie, even if he predicted my Earth Power, or predicted my switch into this and went for Earth Power. Um, but now I was able to force out the Diancie, bring this uh, Galissapod very low. He's going to pivot around on... I, I should have gone for a Stone Edge. Well, I actually, I could have gone for a Stone Edge there to try to knock it out. Um, but I just, I, I have one more turn to hit this uh, Rona Pete, so uh, I get that thing knocked out before Trick Room expires. And now Nido King's gonna come in. Um, so I have to make a decision here of whether or not I want to keep Stack Attacker around, uh, whether or not I think there is a chance he could over predict with Nido King and predict me to go into something else. Uh, such as the Halucha or the Rillaboom. Because um, if you go for Earth Power and he doesn't know how fast my Rillaboom is, I honestly don't know how fast this thing is either. But Ice Beam would be the better play to catch either one of those two. So I decided to sack off my Stack Attacka. Um, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that this was the optimal play. Um, but he over predicts and goes for Ice Beam. But I set up Trick Room again, which was not the correct play if I was staying in. If I was staying in hoping that he would over predict, my play was to go for Gyro Ball and get the damage off against Nido King. Uh, it probably would have clean knocked out Nido King because I was at plus one attack. Um, but still, uh, I still have Trick Room up, so I'm as Stack Attack is still in a strong position, but because he has Detect on the Nido King, he can successfully stall out my Trick Room turns by switching in and out uh, to uh, with, with Golisopod here. And I know that that's the switch he's going to make, so once again I make the double into Porygon 2, so I can set up Trick Room again with Porygon 2. Um, but one thing I wasn't considering was Leech Life is going to give him health back and make him healthy enough to the point where uh, he doesn't actually die. To the toxic damage <laughs> so yeah i'm stuck in here attacking this diancy now but the diancy can opt to set up and kind of just well uh, once trick room expires halucha would be able to uh, iron hit it no matter what but uh, i'm getting some damage off against it and then i switch in to stack attacka on the at like as trick room expires and this I don't know, I don't know what was going on here, honestly. Uh, I, I was just making, I was just making plays mindlessly, thinking about how I could get Trick Room set up again when I didn't really need it set up. Um, like, all I needed, like I said before, was any bit of chip against the Nido King to put it in range for a banded Brave Bird for my Halucha. Um, but... Instead, Stack Attacka is, is going to get another Trick Room up because, once again, the uh, Diancy overpredicted and went for a Moon Blast instead of Earth Power. So, I got another Trick Room up, uh, which, which in front of Diancy, Trick Room setting up another one was the, was the right play. It just wasn't the right play in front of Needle King. Um, but, now I just bring in Porygon 2, Trace the Sheer Force, and I can go for... Ice Beam to try to knock this thing out. Uh, it does just under 90%. I can go for another one. No need to recover stall. A couple Earth Powers, not quite enough to knock me out. And then I will knock that thing out with a Tri Attack to win the game. 3 0. Very good game to Corona. Uh, it's kind of a sloppy game on my end, honestly. I think I should have won that a lot more handily than I did. Um, 
especially if I had kept uh, Rillaboom's substitute up, it would have been a in a position to do so much more work than it did. Uh, it got one kill, but that was the only time it hit the field. Um, I don't know if... I don't know how I would have done against uh, Neo King. Like, I, I still don't know if Needle King would have outsped Rillaboom. But um, regardless, we picked up the win, which means we're going to move on to the semifinals. Uh, we, are, we will be back next week with the semifinal battle against Monster, who we played in week one of this season. And he upset the number three seed, I believe, in his first playoff game to make it to semifinals. Uh, worth noting, we did not get to choose our semifinal opponent of people who won quarterfinals. Uh, it was just highest seed matchup against lowest seed. So one versus eight, we get monster. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our drafting content. We'll be back next week for the semifinals of the NCL.